Here is a problem from class. I'm going to solve it. I'm actually going to solve this two ways. The first way is going to be an analytical solution, and then we can build a numerical model in Python and see that the two answers agree. So <clears throat> this is uh, a charge rod like this, and it has a length L and a charge Q, and we want to find the electric field over here. Now, a lot of times we have this. Remember, we there was an electric field due to a rod, like this, charged Q, length L, and in fact, <clears throat> I give the equations. Uh, there is the following equation, if I just look right here, uh, E rod, right here. So if I said E, the magnitude of this rod is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over the square root of r squared plus l over 2 quantity squared. <clears throat> now, this is where you got to be careful, right? Because just because this says electric field due to a rod doesn't mean that we can use that here. Because if you remember where this came from, this is the electric field due to a rod if you're perpendicular to the axis of the rod. So this would be over here like that. And so uh, that equation comes by adding up all the pieces to this. And, and this is over here on the same axis of the rod. So it's a different problem. So you can't just take this formula and use it. It doesn't work uh, because it was derived for that particular thing. So it's, it's an important lesson in all of physics, really, that you can't just take a formula and use it. So but how do we find the electric field right here, distance r from the center of the rod? Well, we don't know. The only thing we do know is electric field due to a point charge. So if I break this into points, there's my little point like that. Uh, I can say that's a value dq, and it has a distance of x from the origin. Then I can find uh, this distance and find the electric field due to that. So let's the electric field due to this piece is going to be in the x direction. So in this case, it's a, it's a simpler problem than over here because all the electric fields are pointing in the same direction. That makes it a little bit easier. So let's call this diff distance uh, rq. So I'm going to say rq, it's, it's a scalar value it's going to be equal to r minus x, right? So that's the distance from here to there. And we need that because the electric field due to a point charge, dE, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught dQ over rQ squared. <clears throat> this is the scalar version of it. Uh, this is the electric field due to just that little b piece. It's a point charge. I have the constant, I have the charge, which is not the total charge, it's just part of the charge, and then the distance from here to there. And then what I can do is add up all these pieces. So if I take the limit as dq goes to zero and I get an infinite sum, then I get this. E, I'll call it ex, is the integral from uh, x equals negative l over 2 to x equals l over 2 of this, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught dq over r q squared. <clears throat> now, I can't integrate that, right? I can't integrate that for two reasons. One, my limits of integration are along, I'm adding up along the x direction, but x doesn't appear in here, which doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. But I have this integration variable dq. I'd rather this in terms of the width of this dx. And then I need to get rid of r q and instead put that in terms of x. So I already have the r q. What about the dx? Well, if I take the total charge of the rod divided by its total length, that should be the same as the length of this little piece divided by its charge. So I can solve this for dq. I should, I'm sorry, dq over dx. So I can solve this for dq, and I get dq equals q over l dx. So if I put this in for that, and I put this in for that, I get the following. Ex is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, that's just a constant, q over l, that's just a constant, the integral from of dx over r minus x squared. So, and that's from x equals negative l over 2 to l over 2. So can I integrate that? Let me switch a new piece of paper just so I have plenty of room. <clears throat> Okay, so I have ex is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught 
the integral from x equals negative l over 2 to x equals l over 2 dx over r minus x squared. So here, <clears throat> hopefully you can see the option. r in this case is a constant. It doesn't change over the integral. It's a, it's a parameter, but it doesn't actually change over the integral. So I can say this, u equals r minus x. du would be the derivative of that. Well, the derivative of r is a zero because it's a, it's a constant. So I'd get negative dx. So dx is negative du, and I can make a substitution. So now my integral becomes this. Oh, I missed this q over l. 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over l, uh, the integral of negative du over u squared. Now that I can integrate, right? Because this is u to the negative 1, so I can add 1 to that, multiply by its the neg or divide by negative 1, and I get uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over l, and then I get I'm going to put back in my my uh, u is I get 1 over u, which is r minus x. That's not right. What did I do wrong? Let's see, du is 1 over x. If I integrate that, hold on, let's see where I put my thing. Oh, no, it's okay. It's okay. I was looking for, in my mind, I'm thinking it has to be 1 over distance squared, and I'm like, that's just distance. But there's the other distance right there, so it does get that. I was skipping to the head, and I was thinking a couple steps ahead, and I was seeing where I could be wrong. But I'm right. So this is from negative L over 2 to L over 2. So now we just need to plug it in. EX, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over L. And then I'm going to put this as 1 over R uh, minus L over 2 minus 1 over R plus L over 2. And so we could simplify that some, but I think I'm going to leave it like that. Um, but let's do our checks, uh, units. I already did that. So do the units work out? I have 1 over 4 pi charge over distance squared. So this is 1 over distance times 1 over distance, so that does work. Um, what about in the case of r going to infinity, does this go to zero? Well, because if I get really far away from it, the electric field should be zero. If r gets really big, uh, then these two are the same, right? r might some big number minus l over 2 and some big number plus l over 2 would be the same. And so these two numbers would cancel and I'd get zero. So that checks. Uh, then you could check the limit as l goes to zero. Then it looked like a point. It should look like a point charge. Um, and does it, then I get one, no, it doesn't. I think you'd have to play around with this a little bit more. Oh yeah, because there's a, there's a uh, you'd have to bring this in and do some things. So I'm not gonna check that one. Instead, I'm going to build a numerical model. So this is the equation that I wanna check. Okay, so let's, let's do this numerically. How do we do this numerically? Now, the, the key thing with the numerical solution is I actually need some numbers. So I can't get an analytical expression, but I can plug into my analytical expression the values that I have for my numerical thing. So let's pick some stuff. So let's pick this. Here's my rod. Let's say it's um, Q equals uh, 6 nanocoulombs, 6 times to the negative ninth coulombs, uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught is 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared per coulomb squared. Uh, I need the length. Let's say L equals 0 0.1. And then I need this R value. So let's say R equals uh, 0 0.15, and that's meters. Okay, so what I'm going to do numerically is not break it into an infinite number of pieces. I'm going to break it into a finite number of pieces. So let's say I break this into just four pieces. Oh, that's one, two, three, 
four, five, five pieces. Okay, so n equals five. So first of all, what's the charge of each of these pieces? Each piece will have a delta q of q over five. How long will each piece be? I could say d, it's called delta x, is going to be l over n. Wait. Sorry. Right, and n is five in this case, so each piece is l over five. Now, if I want to assume this is a point charge, where is that first point charge? This one, I'll call this uh, x1, is going to be negative l over 2. That's going to be, if this is a length l, this is a length l over 2. Now I need to shift up plus delta x over 2, right? Because I need to shift up to get to the middle of this. That's my position x1. Whereas x2, it's going to be x1 plus delta x. Right, because if I have this position, now I just need to shift right over there to that one. Now I can find the electric field due to each piece. I can just say delta E is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, delta Q, which I know, over uh, R plus X quantity squared. So I know my R value and my x value I can do too. So I'm actually going to do these as vectors, but I'm just trying to set up the whole thing the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to draw these as uh, spheres and in Python and then calculate the electric field at this distance. And then we can compare that to the other equation and see how, how it works out. Okay, so let's jump over here to Python. Um, here I have, this is Glow Script v Python, so it has some really nice features in it. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Uh, I'm going to first say k equals 9 times 10 to the 9th. So k is my 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. And then I'm going to say q equals, what did I say? 6 nanocoulomb, 6 times 10 to the negative 9th. And then l is 0 0.1. Oh, so I, actually my r is pretty far away. Oh, that's fine. r equals, I'm going to have r as, uh, I'm going to put it as a vector. I'm going to call this r o equals um, vector 0, no, no, 0 0.1500. Zero, zero. And then I need, uh, that's it, n. Let's start with n equals 5, just for fun. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is to make the list. I'm going to make a, all these spheres. So I'm going to say this, uh, n equals 0. No, yes, let's try that. While n is less than n, big N. Okay, so this is going to count up to uh, n equals 5. I'm going to make a sphere. So I'm going to actually start off with r0, r1, I guess I should call it. That's going to be equal to the vector, just like I said before, negative L over 2 in the x direction, plus uh, dx equals L over n plus dx over 2, um, and then 0, 0. They, I also need um, dq is q over n. And I'm going to go ahead and make the first sphere. I think this will be easier if I do it this way. So no, I'm not going to do that. No, that, I got it. OK. So now I will say r q. That's the location of each charge. It's going to be equal to n. Um, the initial location, yeah, that's right. It's going to be the initial location, R1, plus the uh, n times the vector 0, or dx, 0, 0. So, so when I go through, I'm going to start off with n equals 0. I'm just going to get the first location is at R1. The next one's going to be shifted over and so forth like that. So I think that will work. Now let's just draw a sphere. I'm not, even going to, I'm not even going to give it a name or anything. I'm just going to display it. Uh, the position is equal to RQ. Uh, the radius is, let's say, it's 0.1, so 0 0.02. Let's try that. I can give it a color, too. Color.yellow. Now I'm going to uh, add one to N. So then I can go through the whole loop. And let's just see what happens when I run this. Okay, so there's my, my spheres. They're kind of large. I need to make this a little bit bigger, smaller. 
Let's pay 0, 0.5. Yeah, that's better. So there I have one, two, three, four, five spheres. So that, that worked out fine. Okay, I, what if I change this to n equals 10? It does, see, it works, right? So now I have 10 spheres. Now I just need to find the electric field due to all the spheres at the point where I want to find the location of the electric field. So, and I, and I drew that just so we can see that it, it is working. That's what I like about that. So let's go up here and say this. I want to calculate the electric field due to each piece and add it to the total, but I need to start with the total. So I'm going to say E equals uh, the vector 0, 0, 0. Now down here, I have my, my location of each sphere. I need to find uh, the location, the vector from the sphere to my observation location. So I'm going to call that R, and it's just going to be RO minus RQ. Right, because if you think about, I should have drawn a picture of this. Here's my charge, here's my observation location, final minus initial, that's the vector. And I can use that to find the electric field. So I can say uh, DE, DE equals K times DQ times norm R divided by mag R squared. So in this case, I have that norm R to include it as a vector. If you didn't do that and you did the whole thing scalar, it would be fine. The way I'm doing it actually works for any observation location. So that's pretty good. Um, okay, so now I need to add that to the total. E equals E plus DE, and then I should be done. Then I can print E equals E, oh, comma, E. Newton's per coulomb, and let's run it. And so there's my electric field. Okay, but now what we want to do is make a comparison with the theoretical version. So let's say E theory equals, now I'm going to go over here to my equation that I derived, and let's say it's equal to K times Q over L times 1 divided by R minus L over 2 minus 1 divided by R plus L over 2. Now, R I've already used up here, so I actually need to rename that, and I shouldn't have done that. So uh, I'm going to say R equals, what did I say it was up here? 0.15 because before is a vector. And this is a really bad idea to rename it as a scalar, but I'm not going to stop. Okay, so now I can print that out. And this is just a scalar value. Print E theory, spell it right, equals comma E theory, Newton's per coulomb. And let's run it. And it's different. But it's almost the same. And it really is the same, because look, I only have 10 points. What if I change this to 100? Because I can do that. Winning, winning. Okay, so, you know, I, it, I'm i not going to do it, uh, but you could make a function to calculate the electric field due to this numerical calculation at different distances and, and make two graphs. I'm not going to do that. I'll leave that for you. Uh, I, I don't, I have somewhere else to go, so I'm going to stop it right here. But there you go. Two ways to find the electric field due to a charge rod along the axis.